When you're at the level to install the prefabricated window box or rough openings, determine the sill height and mark it on the inside panel. Center the opening according to the plans and cut the foam away down to the sill height with a handsaw. Cut the outside panel in a similar fashion. Attach blocks to the sill to help position the buck. Lift the prefabricated assembly into position and have a crew member tack it in place using windlock style fasteners and a 3 inch screw. Check the sill for level and adjust. Now continue on with building the wall around the window box. Run panels just past the inside of the box. Place split ties as close to the buck as possible. Fasten around both sides of the perimeter of the buck using wind lock and screws at maximum 6 inch centers. Trim away excess foam with a handsaw. Reduce waste by saving all your leftover pieces that are 12 inches long or more. They can be used on the second to last row at the top of the wall where there is less form pressure. Make sure you have access to the wall cavity through the sill to ensure concrete consolidation. If openings are formed with window brackets and scrap foam, place wire top ties at the sill level and cap with metal track. This will allow the maximum width opening for placement of concrete and consolidation. Continue to build the wall around the opening using panel pieces to fashion end caps. Place window brackets over end caps in opposing fashion. Plastic tie flanges should be inserted in the slots facing into the opening to provide points of attachment for wood or metal stops to which windows are attached. It may be necessary to oversize the rough opening to accommodate these stops. If direct attachment to concrete is desired, form the rough opening with panel scraps as described previously, but cut holes 4 inches by 4 inches wide in each panel layer to bring the concrete out to the face of the foam. Line the opening with forming plywood and brace. When plywood forms are removed, there will be a concrete surface every 12 inches to attach windows or window stops. When you have built as high as you can comfortably and safely reach, bracing can be attached to the wall. Quadlock recommends that you use a prefabricated, reusable metal alignment and scaffolding system. Metal bracing systems are available up to 30 feet high for commercial applications. Brace only from one side of the wall, preferably the inside. Start your bracing layout three feet from all corners. Fasten a vertical brace to all ties using number 10 wood screws. Ensure that the wall is pulled tightly against the vertical brace, but take care not to overdrive and strip the screws in the plastic. When installing lateral braces, have one crew member use a level to rough plumb the wall. Remember to adjust turnbuckles so they will have adequate travel for fine-tuning the wall later. Place braces all the way around walls every 6 to 8 feet. Place your scaffolding and railings and double check that every component is complete and securely fastened. Check with your local jurisdiction for scaffolding safety standards. If building a stem wall up to 4 feet, vertical bracing is not required. Simply place diagonal brace every 8 feet. If you do not have access to a metal bracing system, you'll need to construct one out of lumber. Please consult the product manual for details. After setting the top row of panels, remove the interlock knobs and secure the panels with wire top ties instead of the plastic ties. Each panel pair gets three wire top ties, one at each end and one in the center of the panels. At the butt joints, wire top ties should appear four inches from one another. Then set the metal track over the panels to lock in the wire top ties. Secure the overlap corners with a self-tapping screw. Place pre-cut pieces of vertical rebar around the outside of the wall within reach of crew members standing on inside scaffolding. 
Slip the vertical steel down the wall and into the plastic pipe hooked on the stub steel. Tie the vertical steel into position at the top to a quad lock tie or the horizontal bar. Vertical bars should be secured to the quad lock system only after the wall has been plumbed. Before placing concrete, you should use the pre-pour list found on the outside of the tie box. Track securely fastened to footing. Quad lock ties placed 12 inches on center, both vertically and horizontally. Metal corner brackets and tie flanges in place. Vertical braces spaced every six to eight feet along the wall, depending on the height. Angled walls should be checked for outside angle brackets and gaps in panels foamed. Window and door openings checked for square, braced horizontally and vertically, slots and sills for access, and 1x4 or wind locks fastened securely around the perimeter. Wire top ties at each end of top units and at 24 inches. Metal track secured on top of wire top ties and wall. Walls plumb, straight, square, and level. Extra bracing material on site and handy. Ask your concrete producer about their ICF mix. The concrete mix should be highly flowable and able to meet the specified compressive strength requirements. However, these standards should always be followed. Compressive Strength Requirement ASTM Standard C-94 Subsection 13 or CSA Standard A23.1. A maximum 6 inch slump in accordance with ASTM Standard C-143 Subsection 11 or CSA Standard A23.2. Ideally, the concrete pumping equipment you have ordered should be a boom type with a maximum 3-inch diameter hose on the end. Start in a corner and work around the perimeter. Place 2 to 3 feet of concrete in the first lift. Place concrete under the windows from the sills. The second and consecutive lifts should be 3 to 4 feet high. Consolidation with a pencil vibrator or rotting with a length of rebar is recommended. Do not over vibrate. Concrete buildup on the ties and rebar can be removed using the vibrator or by shaking the vertical rebar. If you're continuing up with panels and ties later, make sure to cover the top of the panels. Nail two 1x4s at a 90 degree angle and move them along as you pour. Pour only to the middle of the top row of panels. If you're not continuing up, trowel the top and set the J-bolts. Now that you've poured the concrete, check the alignment of the wall. In all cases, make sure that you place the concrete in accordance with national standards and local building codes. Thanks for being with us. The quad lock system is easy to build with when following the basic principles we have shown. We look forward to hearing from you about your quad lock project. For more information, please refer to the advanced section of this presentation.